Well, let me welcome everyone that's here. I'm glad you came to the chaplain's seminar. Uh, so I want you to feel relaxed. We're going to go through what National has asked me to present unto you. And then on your local level, your chapter level, a national level, if you have any questions, feel free. I'll say to, when I say to my church family, there is no right and wrong answer. I'll try to meet you where you are, answer you as honestly as I can concerning the duties and the responsibility of the chaplain and what our expectation is of the disabled American veterans, okay? So now, and the purpose is to talk about the role and the responsibilities of the chaplain by providing an overview with some guidance and information of the do's and don'ts. Now, the first one I did two years ago, we had a lot of do's and don'ts. We had some questions as, uh, what do I do and what do I do not do? What, what's expected of me and what is not expected of me? Let me go on your local level and your uh, department level. Every chapter, chapter operates differently. What is suggested is we all stay in the same vein. Uh, one question, and it's, we're going to address it in a minute. The very first question that I had was, is the Bible to be open or is the Bible to be closed? Some chapters don't have Bibles, others do. National does not have a strict rule on open or closed. It doesn't matter. But um, just kind of know what your rules, your bylaws are concerning that chapter. Okay, that's, I said that to make the point of don't expect your chapter to operate like chapter 3 or chapter 4 or chapter 7. It's all in your own written bylaws. Okay? All right. There's the, if you want to take a picture of that, uh, go ahead and do so. When you're ready, say, we ready. Uh, <laughs> all right, they wanted us to give you the history of it, how it has started. And the DAV and the role of the chaplain has always been a unifying figure, but not always one would expect. The first national chaplain was a, was a clerical exemption and was not required to serve in the military, but he enlisted anyway. And after entering during World War I to fight the war, he has said everyone who avoids military duty was either a hypocrite or a low-down coward. He served with such distinction that he was promoted eventually to a battalion sergeant major before an artillery shell blinded him while he was saving a wounded comrade. In addition to serving DAV, he helped disabled children and found the Jewish Braille Institute to make religious texts accessible. And these are some of your former military chaplains. We're unique in our own way with a spiritual calling in that their ministry may call them to go to the battlefield. At least nine military chaplains have been honored with the Medal of Honor for hero, heroism dating back to the Civil War. Though chaplains are considered non-combative in today's military, Milton Lorenzo Hingley was named the fighting chaplain after picking up a musket and joining the ranks during the Civil War Battle of Atlanta. Though DAV does its utmost to send our chaplains into harm's way, there are similarities between a DAV chaplain and that both must facilitate and support the support and need of all religions, went too fast. We are considered, DAV is considered non-denomination or non-sectarian. Non-sectarian means that we don't favor any particular faith or non-faith or denomination. Sectarian is that we have our own personal faith or religion that we don't impress or try to convict or persuade on any other faith. And the question that have been asked of me a many times are most like Christians, knowing that I am one, why is it that I not say when I pray in the name of Jesus, which is my natural way of praying? So I had to learn to be mindful and cautious that there are so many other faiths within our organization. There are none faith who don't believe in anything. They just people. 
who love what they love and do what they do. That's why DAB take a stand on being non-sectarian because it's been asked of me, not only on the national level, but also on my department level. So to be respectful and not be disrespectful and honest, that's why you don't hear me say it. Um, I've been told because of my faith, as long as I am in this room, we be mindful of it. But if you catch me out there in that hallway out there and ask me who it is that I serve and what my faith, you gonna get it. Amen. You gonna get it. All right. <laughs> I love it. On with this, what we have to do. A soldier just got I received authorization to wear a beard because of his pagan faith. And when the army authorized beards for religious soldiers in 2017, the move was a response to years of requests. I can remember when soldiers was not allowed to wear beards for a whole lot of reason. But then it did benefit some when they wore the beards and found out they had to shave it. They got, they were compensated for the shaving profile. Y'all don't remember that. But I'm still doing claims for shaving profiles for Vietnam vets. So it has been established. So that was a good thing. Even before going back decades, chapters have been asked to support a wide range of spiritual beliefs. So the United States has the world's largest Christian population, and more specific, the largest Protestant population than any country. Christian compromise 63% of that population. But even among that, those who identify themselves as Christians, there are many different creeds and very many different beliefs. You have the Christians, the AMEs, the CMEs, the Methodists, the Catholics. It's just a whole umbrella. As Baskin Robbins, 36 flavors of Christians. <laughs> Amen. We all come in a clump, as well as their other faith and religions and tradition. And I respect them all. I truly respect them all. I'm not here to persuade anyone or convince anyone to change your belief or your stand. And for non-faith, I'm not here to persuade you to believe in something. If you believe in an oak tree, I'm going to help you believe in that oak tree. <laughs> so that's not our, our desire. I think I learned with the button, but that's okay if you're going to teach me better. Yeah. Okay. Do you have another open USB port on here? I don't know. I just stay in my lane. Okay. And that should just be back and forth with the arrow. Okay. All right. I'm going to learn something today. Okay. So what qualifies us to be in chaplains? As, as in the military, DAV chaplains are important officers who can be a unifying and inspiring force within their unit and department leadership. I got to say this, I know I'm being recorded. Um, but as an important role, and maybe it's because of the role that I'm in, no matter when they do roll call, when they assemble, I'm still trying to figure out why the chaplains are the last to get called. But that's all right, I've gotten over it. If we're that important, when they call roll, when they do department, when they do chapters, the chaplain is the last. That's why we pray all the way through there. So by the time we get to the end and you call us, we know who we are. So we don't want anybody to get offended or think that you're being overlooked. It's universal. You're just going to be last. But I'm reminded in my faith that the last going to be first. So keep me at the end because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up and rank one way or the other. So unlike military chaplains, DAB chaplains do not necessarily have the extensive training required to perform the many duties to serve everyone of every faith. DAB chaplains are not required to have any special accreditation. Instead, they are chosen by the membership and officer election. Based on their election to office, DAB chaplains do not have the authority to officiate marriages. DA chaplains do not have the authority to officiate marriages. Someone got it twisted a while back. They didn't have anyone else that wanted to serve as chaplain. So they made this one person to be chaplain. 
it went slap to their head. And somehow or another, they figured out, I can go out and marry some folks. Not, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're not licensed to do that. Stay in your role, stay in your lane, and do what they expect it is. So based on the election alone, DAB chaplains does not have the authority to officiate marriages, perform religious birth rituals. Don't go around here baptizing these folks' babies. Grant absolution, you can't pardon yourself. Don't you pardon nobody else. When you get caught, caught in trouble. Provide spiritual counseling. If you don't know, you just don't know. Never be ashamed to say to someone, I really don't know. I don't have the answer to that question. But always look for ways and avenues to refer them to someone. You'd be surprised how many gifts and talents are within your chapter, within the chapter across the city from you. And it's all about asking. I encounter so many people who are afraid to ask. You can't look at people and say, well, they look like they don't want to be bothered. They may be having a bad day. Ask them anyway. The only way we don't know is we don't ask. DAB cannot be expected to understand the tenet of every religion, but they do not need to be respectful. They need to be respectful and honor the needs of all. Um, because I had gone to seminary school, because I love to read, in spite of what people think that most people don't like to read, um, when I got my, received my calling, not only going to Bible college, I just started researching, why do this one believe like this one, what is this? Not to judge or criticize, but I wanted to have an understanding just in case I encountered another faith or religion. I do not remember it all, but if you say one word that's in your faith, it'll click and like, okay. So it won't seem like when I ask you a question that you may, you're being challenged on your faith or belief. It's just, and you don't have to do this on the local department or not, but if you really wanna know, because you may not never know who's all in your chapter or you're on your department, when the different departments come together and traveling, I'm always mindful because I've encountered people coming up to me uh, just a month or so ago declaring their faith to me, and I don't know what they thought I was gonna do. I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. And so they said it again. I'm like, that's great. Um, and I, I don't know what the expectancy it was. And then they went on to share some things with me. Not once did I challenge them or made a statement of what my faith was. Sometimes they just want to listen in ear. Sometimes they want to challenge you. And, but wisdom says, just be still and listen. OK? All right. Being disrespectful of veteran faith, even unintentionally, it's harmful for morale as well as the things that we believe in and trust in and knowing that we're not there to hurt or wound anyone but to be there. So we have our moral characteristics. We have our moral faith, the stars and the stripes. It gives it on the, on the screen of an Air Force chaplain in Texas sentenced to 10 years for selecting sex from a teenager None of us are perfect. What's in us is in us. And if you're not mindful, it's going to come out. But you're to be represented. Represent yourself. Love yourself. Walk in integrity. Walk in the wisdom that has been given unto you. I found out that we don't trust the wisdom and the knowledge that's already in us. We're too busy trying to challenge one another, being jealous of one another, desiring what others have. And the truth of the matter, you don't know how that person got what they got. And if you got it, you may not be able to handle it. Thank you. All right. All righty then, we're going on. Knowing that electing someone is a chaplain who has an extensive criminal record, so on your chapter levels, on your department levels, when you elect or try to, or you ask someone to be a chaplain, don't do an FBI background check on them. That's not your job, but you should know something about them. Whether they are a thief or a liar or a swindler, uh, someone in that chapter should be familiar with that person to know because uh-uh is not going to fix it. Okay? We don't want to be made ashamed. How many know just as chaplains, none of us are saints? Some of our wings are still scorched. Some of our cover is still covered up. We had a message one time, bed too short and covers too narrow. Now you figure out what that means. 
All right. But should be the good of representatives of DAV being capable of serving without being a distraction for DAV purposes. Chaplains should never, regardless of their personal or religion views, condemn per persons of different faith or belief. That includes the LGBT community. I'm going to say that again. That's also inclusive. And with us, most of us, some of us, none of us, walk around undercover. If your covers are revealed, then that still don't give me the right to judge or condemn anyone. My belief is somebody's daughter, somebody's son, someone mama them, and they have a right just if they served in this great military, served our nation, they deserve the same respect that we do. Because even being so called straight, you can be judged. How do I know? You can be straight as a boy in error and somebody still judge you because your shoes are a different color than theirs. So judgment comes in all forms, fashions, and colors. If you don't want to be judged, then you dare not judge another. Amen, I'll say it. There is no room in DAB to offend people who are different than us. As surely as the chaplain can support DA mission, they also can support DAV reputation and how we operate if we act in aligning ourselves. Our resources are our ritual, our national constitution and bylaws, and our chapter officer guide. And if you scan the queue, all of that is inclusive in there. Any questions so far before we go on? All right. I'm with you. You don't want to be in this cold room. All right. The role of the DAV chaplain is special because the need of veterans, disabled veterans in service are special. We can represent the compassion of an entire chapter or state of a DA member. A chaplain can, I expect, I expect you to have compassion one for another. If you don't have compassion, if you don't have a listening ear, then you decline being chaplain. Because you're going to need somebody to listen to you. I know some of us talk to ourselves, we talk to the wall, we talk to stop signs, but every now and then, you're going to need a voice to talk back to you. I beg the difference when people say, as long as you don't answer yourself, but when you can't find someone, you may need to answer yourself. I do it all the time. My husband said, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to me, and self going to answer, so. <laughs> provide comfort and facilitate support for the ill. The good of the order, you pledge to act and conduct yourself in such a manner at all times and places as will only affect the good of the order. To me that says integrity. Who and what you are today, be that same person at noon, be that same person at night, and when you go to bed. Now, if you're that same, if you're a liar in the morning, be a liar at noon, be a liar before you go to bed, and wake up still being that same liar. Don't be flip-flopping, because won't nobody know who you are. They'll look at you like, you weren't that person yesterday. Oh, was well, something happened and I had to change my mind. Change your mind and walk in integrity. Walk in love, walk in compassion. The Constitution and bylaws a non-participation ship. Th thank you. Help me. This organization, this organization shall be non-political and non-sectarian. In the name of this organization or name of any subdivision, I know y'all can read, there are shall not be used in representing the desires or wishes of its membership in any political, sectarian, or labor dispute except as hereafter provided. The officer guide you'll find the chaplain is responsible for leading the opening prayer of the chapter meeting. Now, if you don't know a good prayer, you can always Google one. DAV have some prayers. We have rituals and books that have the various prayers. And that's why it's so good to know those that labor among you, know those that are in your chapter, that you can Google it. I was told by my praise and worship leader years ago, she said, Pastor Miss Google will find anything you want. And I found out she hadn't disappointed me yet. So most of your phones have a Google app on it. Google DAV open in prayer. You don't have to get it word for word, but at least learn some of it. So it won't sound like you don't really know what you're doing. Or you went by the bar and got tips on your way in and you're fumbling at the, don't do that. 
so we know that we're responsible. See, y'all too tight in here for me. I, I, don't, I don't do tight. You act like you're scared to smile and you're waiting on the next word coming out of my mouth. This is me all the time. I, I can't change it. If I change, I forget who I am. And then I try to be some of you all and it's like, I'm not going to make it. This ain't good for me. All right. So in that office of guidance, you'll find just what you need. And it may be called on to represent the chapter at a funeral. Whew. Service for the deceased members and send sympathy cards, visit members of the chapter of that family. Now that's a big thing with me. I request on the Department of Alabama level for those that are in our chapters, and I don't even know half of them. And I represent them all, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and Tennessee. I don't mind Mississippi sending me an email said we launched a member. I love cars. I love to purchase cars. Yes, DAB has provided me with cars to send out. I don't like them. They don't say anything. I personally go to the Dollar Tree, two for a dollar. I go to Walmart if I know you and personally read those cars because you don't know when your turn is going to be. You don't want no... Well, Jesus, well, you don't want no bland car <laughs> that don't say anything. You want to feel the compassion. Someone was thinking about my family. Someone was thinking about me and thought enough of me. It may not be no money in it. Don't act like my grandfather. When he opened the car and no money is in it, he just tossed it aside. Be grateful and be thankful that somebody thought about you to send you a car. And someone else wants that same appreciation. Okay, you may not, well, I don't need nobody. I don't want nobody to send me no car. Get sick and no one comes to see you. Get in a crucial situation and no one picks up the call. And with these cell phones, all I know is call and answer. So if I don't text you, don't worry about it. Send me a number so I can call you. Uh, they, they so unique in sending things to let you know. And I feel like that's part of our duty and responsibility. If you don't have the compassion, you may not even love them. You may not even like them. That's all right. That's the time you can put on a pretense. So at least when they walk up to you and say, thank you for those encouraging words, you won't even know what they're talking about. Just say you're welcome and nod your head. Ah, uh, prolicitize. To induce someone to convert to one's faith, to recruit someone to join one part of an institution. So that's not only in the chaplain, but that's just in everyday life. If they don't believe that an oak tree is an oak tree and it's shedding pineapples, let them see their pineapples. I learned that working in mental health. And my patients, if they saw chickens, I saw chickens too. Because to say that you didn't aggravate them, I wasn't going to try to convince and persuade them. You're in the mental hospital. There's no chickens under your bed. You're in a bed and you're safe. Because they saw chickens. I didn't. I just didn't tell them how many. Well, how many you see? I don't know, it's a lot of them. Well, I don't see that many, but if you see them, I see them too. Same thing that can apply to everyday life. Whew. All right, meet your veterans where they are. Don't talk above their head. Don't talk below where they are as if you ought to have more sense. And it's always said where well, everyone has common sense. I share all the time with my husband and I, we go back and forth. I said, we ought to take the common sense test to my brother-in-law shared with us. He said, don't everybody have common sense? I said, well, they don't have to worry about taking the test then. We just go on a trip that everybody has common sense. So meet them where they are. Why is there a Bible at the meeting? Well, when you join that ch chapter, it was a Bible there. Before you join and say you want to be a part of that chapter, ask why. You may not be of Christian faith. I checked with Ed Harmon on last year because this kept coming up. This kept coming up. You know, I'm offended because there's a Holy Bible there. Or why is not something else there? Before you join that chapter, before you become a part of that, find out why. If it's going to cause an eruption, if it's going to cause a fight, if it's going to cause you to go another way, have a discussion. It may be a meeting ground. Whether it's open or closed, I'm sure we can all come together and work this thing through. It was there when you joined. If you're offended because it's open, likely the more likely they'll close it because we're here to celebrate one another, to work together. It does no good for us to come together to fight one another all because of my belief and your belief and your order and your religion. 
That's not why we're coming together. We're coming together to keep a promise that we promise to serve one another, our fallen veterans, their families, their children, the dog, the goldfish, whatever is going to bring us together, that's what we're coming together for. And sometimes I believe we lose that focus. It's too many discussions that can cause us to be separated and divided, and we don't need to be divided. It's too much division in other places for DAV to be divided. We, I believe that we stand as one, with one voice and one sound, to make all things happen for the good of the order. Agree? All right. Ooh, y'all wear a sister out. For more information, these are the things that we can go to our DAB National Constitution and Bylaws, official ritual of DAB, DAB Chapter Officer Guide, and something else these phones will do for you. Um, they'll talk to you. If you find the site and you put it on speaker and you cooking and baking, it'll, do, it'll work for you. There is no excuse that we should not be familiar where we are, where our stand is, what, is, what are our do's, what are our don'ts, that we don't get in trouble when you know, it leaks out that we're teaching another thing, we're believing in what that organization believe in, we're trying to incorporate what their belief and what their stand is. And well, I read this on their website. Have you read what's on DAV website? Because those are the answers that's going to be asked of you. So I think we've gone through the ritual and honoring um, the fallen. And the ritual also holds fairly the comprehensive guide on how to conduct a memorial service. Um, although you say, well, it still quotes Christian scriptures references. They gave an example about the valley of the shadow of death, which we know in the Christian Bible is the 23rd Psalm. But it does so in a way that it doesn't bind followers to an exclusive Christian idea. It's opened up many other avenues when we, walk, when we talk about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, I don't know if, how many was at the memorial service on yesterday, but we talked about life is a journey. So whether you're faith or non-faith, you're going to have a battle of shadow of death experience. Amen. Amen. You don't have to believe in anything to hit some bumps in the roads, to have tragedy hit, to have a loved one transition. That's a battle of shadow of death, whether you have faith or not. That's the time that you're going to need this, uh, someone to comfort or a kind word. So don't just look at it as being a Christian uh, line or a Christian verse from uh, a Holy Bible or the Holy Quran or whatever you read, as long as you have peace within yourself, that's your personal faith, that's your personal belief, hold on to it. Um, don't be so mindful of trying to persuade others. As long as we can find common ground to celebrate one another, I'm a strong encourager. I love to encourage people. I love to bring you up from out of that place where life have been, you know, been rough with you. Of you've been in some places that no one understands. And I may not understand it, but if you sit long enough with me, you're gonna leave me encouraged one way or another. If it's nothing that you're on Weight Watchers, forget all that stuff about no chocolate. I'm gonna get me a chocolate bar. I'm gonna feed my flesh. I'm gonna be happy. I weighed 200 when I came in here. I'm gonna be 201, cause now I'm all right. Some stuff is just simple. We put ourselves in bondage. You, if love and compassion and a hearing ear is not there, there are many times people just want someone to vent to. They just want you to listen. They don't want your answer. They don't want your opinion. They just need a sounding board. So we got to learn to hold our mouth and then wait for them to say, well, what's your opinion? What's your thought? And then respond, okay? Like all recommendations, it could and should be omitted or replaced if it causes discomfort based on the belief of the fallen. The same philosophy can be applied to other occasions, ideas, and faith. It states in the good of the order, I pledge to act and conduct myself in such a manner at all times, not sometimes, at all times and places, as will only affect the good of the order. The National Constitution bylaws have been established that chaplains are elected by DAV membership 
It doesn't elaborate much on responsibility, but it's the law of DAB, and it does contain one very important stance that applies to chaplains as well as all who represent DAV. We represent the DAV organization. When you say that to someone that's not a member but have heard about us, whether you know it or not, there's a great expectation. And we don't need to let anyone down. Don't go out there misrepresenting, first of all, yourself, and then misrepresent what DAV stand for. The expectancy that we do it because we care, we do it free of charge, don't share with them your wisdom of the expectation of the order, and then say, and we'll send you a bill. Then that was supposed to be funny. Yeah. Although it was supposed to be funny, I've known it to happen. Yeah. That we do what our mission statements say, and we expect people to pay us. They done heard about. We do it in honesty and integrity, free of charge. Wisdom is free of charge. It does not carry a price tag. It states that VAV, I have to keep saying, is non-sectarian that applies to faith as well. There is no official religion for DAV. All right. Okay, we went over that. If you walk away from this meeting with one thing, I hope it's a broad understanding of the role of the chaplain can play in our organization. But if you tend to, if you intend to be served as a chaplain, or even as an elected leader in another position, it is critical to understand that it is not the responsibility of DAV to indulge in proselyte. Prosel thank you. Mm -hmm. All these three syllable words, but thank you. See, I need help, and I'm not ashamed. Help me. Your job is to meet the veteran wherever they are and to identify. Uh, or be in an active place of any number of faith-based initiative. When you're elected chaplain for DAV, it's important that you do not allow your personal faith to interfere with the DAV mission. Thank you for your interest in being a chaplain. We're grateful to work with you and help support you, our nation disabled American veterans and their families, because we're here one for another.